All right, so I guess a lot of you are, are in the process or already have upgraded your iPhone to the new iOS 8. And as you can see here from the from the screen right now, my phone is currently running iOS 7.1.1. Yes, I didn't uh, download the new update, which was, I believe, 7.1.2. Uh, uh, I didn't upgrade my phone to that. And <laughs> the one thing I can say is, before you start this, one, you better have a very fast internet connection because you can see this update. Uh, if you can see it from the screen here. I'm going to try to pull it up uh, in the screenshot for you. But it is uh, 1.67 gigabytes. This thing is huge and from the download speed i take it that apple uh, is getting their servers are getting crushed uh, because my my internet speed here is not the, not the greatest uh, in today's standards but i see that it's going to i mean it's been taking forever when i started this, it was going to take three hours to upgrade my iphone um i don't know if apple with all their engineers and all their great technology and knowledge you would think they can wrap that somehow or allow you to download uh, the iOS 8 update, maybe via even with a torrent, because then you can have multiple seeders out there and it would help the overall process of downloading this if you could split it all into uh, parts, I would guess. So I just wanted to start showing you the process here. That's why I decided to start this video now uh, to show you the, the, the processes of upgrading to a new iOS on your iPhone. If you're fortunate enough, you can delete a bunch of stuff on your phone. My phone only had, I think, 322 megabytes left. And it said you needed an astronomical figure. I don't even know, really remember what it was uh, on the phone just to hit upgrade on the phone and let it do it you know, over the air, which I wouldn't suggest. You're going to use up most of your data plan. So connect it to a computer, such as I did here, and either Mac or Windows, you just need iTunes. And make sure you back up your phone first. I backed all my stuff up. All my applications are backed up on my computer. I know I got a good solid backup. And then I clicked on Update Now. And then it ran into this process about downloading the files that it's going to need. So um, I'm not going to sit here and just uh, talk to you the whole time and let you watch it downloading. I think that's quite boring to do that. So I'm going to let it finish downloading, and then I'll be back with you to show you some more of the process. Uh, if the screens change or something on updating, if I catch it, you know, I could be watching TV or something because you can start this and just go to bed. That's what I would suggest. Start at night and go to bed, and when you wake up in the morning, your iPhone should be brand new with the iPhone 8, uh, the iOS 8 update. But uh, I'll walk through you with a couple of the interface changes if I can find them. Um, you know, working with a computer class today, the kids are actually showing me that you can actually, you know, there's swipe keys uh, like the, you know, like Android has and all that cool stuff that you can now do with some add-ons. So we'll look into that and we'll look into some of the other features that I'm really doing this for. And one feature I'm really, really happy with is when you start getting those group text messages and you start getting those beep, beep, beep all night long because people are replying to that text message, you can now opt out of it and uh, get rid of your name off of there and silence it. So thank goodness to Apple for allowing us to do that. All right, I'll be back with you here in a while to uh, add on to this video. Okay, so as we can see now, the iPhone uh, update has finally been downloaded to my computer, which did take about roughly two hours. So it depends on the speed, the overall speed of your internet connection. But right now it's verifying the update on my iPhone. And the iPhone is, in fact, in the update mode right now. So it's actually pushing this update into my iPhone. So, uh, so far, so good. That's the way you would start your, uh, your upgrading for your new iOS 8.0. So here's a, a, one of the new features in iOS 8. The upgrade's all done. Uh, it, as you can see from the beginning of the video, it took quite a while to upgrade the phone. But there's a lot of benefits uh, that you're going to receive with the new iOS 8 that we didn't have in the past. I understand from talking to my son with the Android crowd, you know, they've had this stuff for a while, but um, you know, Apple has cleaned it up, and, it, and they, they've done a really nice job with it. So here's a group message you can see. Now, how many times have you guys stuck in a group message and you're getting those bings and dings all night long? 
people replying, especially if it's a large group, and it just gets really, really annoying. And you said, boy, I wish I could just delete it. You would delete the message, and next thing you know, you keep getting those. So now in iOS 8, if you're in a group message and click on details at the very top of the page, you're going to see the people that are in the conversation. If you look down here at the bottom, it says either do not disturb, where you can turn that on, and now you're not getting any more of those. Or you can simply click on the bottom where it says leave this conversation. So you're done with it. You said your piece, and you just click on the leave your conversation. And that would actually get rid of that conversation altogether. So again, you have the do not disturb, or at the bottom of the page, leave this conversation. So there's a couple different ways now to get out of group messaging. Another thing that I really enjoyed uh, that I loaded this morning, something my son was showing me with his Android phone. For a long time, ever since the iPhone was invented, uh, Steve Jobs has always felt when he first created the iPhone and the iPod Touch that we don't need to have add-on keyboards. You need to use what they give you and, and be happy with that. The keyboard has always been less than adequate. It's just been hard to type on. Well, now, not only did they include a new keyboard with um, faster word searches, what they also did was, I'm trying to think of somewhere where I can uh, bring this up. Uh, let's bring up my Twitter application. And now what they've done is on the keyboard, if I hit new tweet, there's actually, this is the keyboard by default that comes with the new iPhone. You can see here when you start typing, if you start typing TH and you got this, you just hit this. Um, if I hit M-A-Y, well, it's going to put that in there. Um, may uh, be the best. You just hit, so it picks up those keywords that you're going to want to use. Now, what I also did was I also loaded a new keyboard called SwiftKey. Now, SwiftKey is free, and it really, really helps you a lot to uh, get your messages out there quickly. And let me show you how SwiftKey works. So we're going to back this up one, and we'll just hit a period. And now what you'll do is you just swipe across the screen to type. So if we're going to type this, uh, this is the best keyboard. keyboard so you can see how much faster this is to type you just move your fingers around the keys and just kind of interconnect the letters that I have ever used and you can send that tweet out right like that so this is a really nice keyboard uh, it's called swift key and again it's free when you set SwiftKey up, there is a SwiftKey cloud. We're just going to delete that message. We're not going to send that. And let me see if I can get to that screen here. There is a SwiftKey cloud now. And what the cloud does, you turn it all on. You set your cloud up to sync. And in reading the directions, what happens is the SwiftKey cloud starts learning the way that you're typing, the, the, the common phrases you use, the common words you use. And if you have an iPad, if you have another iPhone or an iPod Touch, it will allow those devices to also pick up that same information from your account from the SwiftKey cloud, which is really handy, and it makes a lot of sense. The idea behind it is you don't have to train every device based on how you actually type your text. And I think that's, that's, a, big, that's a huge bonus. The other thing they did with, and some people say this is a big feature here, is the translucent um, uh, back screen here where you can actually, you know, uh, turn on like your uh, do not disturb mode. You know, you can uh, turn on and off your Bluetooth, your wireless, put it in airplane mode. Um, what's nice about this is the camera is here. So you can turn your camera on right from this screen. What I also like about the camera, let's say, um, so let's say the phone is locked. You can also just pull this up and there's a camera on the lock screen. And I don't think I can lock it without shutting my uh, display off here, so I'm not going to do that. 
But if I pull this up, they made some advancements on the camera. We'll turn the camera on. And on the camera, they made some advancements down here. If you pull this over, there's now a time lapse where you can start, uh, you know, taking photos over time and doing time lapse photography and then piece those together into a small little video. The video app we had in the past. Um, then there's the photo app. And a lot of people don't even know these are here. These are really, really neat uh, little applications built into the phone system itself. Square, so you can make an absolute square photo. Or Pano. Now, if you've never used Pano before, uh, I had a Windows phone before. And Pano allows you to start it. And you just simply move your move your camera across. And as you're moving your camera across, it will start taking a picture. And it makes a beautiful panoramic. So it's a really, really great little application. Let's close that out. So there's a few basic features so far that I found. I'm still playing around with the uh, new iOS 8 update uh, to see what else it will allow me to do. But so far, the upgrade went well. The All my applications stayed. Uh, I didn't have to lose any applications. I didn't have to rearrange. Before I upgraded one time from one iOS uh, to another, and I had to regroup all my applications again, and that does get to be a bit of a chore. So I hope that you're uh, interested in the new iOS 8. I think it's a, a well worth upgrade. Uh, you know, I usually skip the small upgrades that come through. Most of those are security updates or something, you know, minor update. But this is a really nice enhancement for your iPhone and for your iPad. So you can also do this with your iPads and also add the Swift key to your iPad and the third-party keypads and keyboards. So it's worth it. And I would say, you know, for free, download it and upgrade your iPhone today. I don't know if it works on the 4 and the 4S. I would imagine it would slow it down pretty uh pretty much to a crawl i know uh, ios 7 did that's why i went out and bought the new iphone when i did so i would be um very much digging into it to see you know read some forms and stuff to see if it will work but i wouldn't recommend upgrading uh your your you know your um your iphone 4 or 4s because i think the processor is just not there to uh to handle the load that this new iOS 8 is going to put on it. But the 5C, the 5S, and obviously the new 6s will come out with it on it, and I think you'll be just fine. So hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to find more interesting components to this overall new iOS update, and I'll bring this to you next time. Thanks for watching Jack's Tech Corner, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.